This is Jerry Diamond with How to Get Out of Babylon, bringing you Lights Out, Chapter 69 of like 72, 73, whatever, 75, I don't remember. All right, so I, I got Jersey's computer working, so you might hear from screaming from the other room. Uh, either laughter or hopefully no strong language so <laughs> anyway chapter 69 mark could see the two living girls being led into mr davis's cabin by john and snuffer the dead girls being carried into the barn by several very unsavory looking characters he didn't want to imagine what they would do to her lifeless body somehow he was there in the barn being forced to watch he could actually feel the dirty mzb hands on her cold skin it was horrible he couldn't bear to watch, but something wouldn't let him look away. As the Cretans began to ravage her, he felt he could take no more. Mark woke, sitting upright in his bed with cold sweat dripping from every pore. He felt a hand on him and recoiled in fear. A split second later, he realized he was at home and the hand that had touched his back belonged to Jess. Another nightmare, she asked softly. Yeah, was all he had the breath to choke out. Which one this time? the dead one. He'd been having nightmares about the three girls at least two or three times a night since he'd seen their ordeal at the ranch over a week ago, and he had to go back there in the morning, and he dreaded it more than death. He looked at the wind-up alarm clock. It was only a little after midnight. He was so tired, not just from the lack of sleep that the almost constant nightmares caused, but also from the dread and hate he held for watching the compound. Ted had been pulled off of Jim's team, as he wasn't able to stand night after night, hearing the screams of the women and the evil laughter of the MZBs that invariably followed. Paul Jensen, Olga's husband, had taken over for him, although he looked like it was quickly wearing on him as well. Gunny had taken to having Brother Bob debrief the men with him and try to bolster their spirits. It helped some, but they all hated the job. Mark knew the only thing that kept them going was the knowledge that someone had to do it. Try to get back to sleep, honey. Sure, he thought. That was easy to say. But it wasn't so easy to do, though. Okay, he said. He lay back down and felt her arm wrap around him. Maybe it would protect him from the bad dreams. A few minutes later, he was sleeping again. The next thing he knew, the wind-up alarm was singing its annoying song, and the hands were pointing at 3.30. When they arrived at the observation post, Jim reported that nothing had happened. Mark had hoped John would have at least sent a scout party out. He needed this to be over. Although he knew if a large raiding party did go out, it meant that lots of people were going to die. He felt conflicted like never before in his life. The only good news they'd gotten in the past week was that John sent 25 men out on the last raid, and Snuffer only came back with 18 and no loot or prisoners. John had appeared very upset at the team when they returned. Mark first feared and then hoped that John would take it out on one or more of his MCB buddies, but he didn't. Mark climbed up the small hill and took the first watch like he always did. At least it was usually quiet this early in the morning. Today was no exception. In fact, it was unusually quiet the whole day. In the early afternoon of the second day of Mark's team's watch, activity around the compound increased to a pace the observers hadn't witnessed before in the 16 days they'd been observing. Mark, who was looking forward to the debate between Rob and Barney the day after tomorrow, wondered if something big was brewing. If it was, he might miss the debate. Again, he was conflicted. He didn't want to miss the debate, but he needed this to be over, too. His question was at least partially answered when seven trucks pulled into the middle of the courtyard. They were checked over by a couple of guys and filled with fuel. Mark wondered how many men John would send out in seven trucks. He'd sent 22 men in three trucks before, that ratio would indicate that as many as 50 might go in seven trucks. That was way too many for a scout team. If John was planning a raid without sending a scout team first, it went against his normal M.O., modus operandi. Mark wondered what could be up. He was hopeful this was the one they'd been waiting for, but he refused to let his spirits get too high. He didn't think he could take another big disappointment. <laughs>